Section 1. Preventing Long-Term English Learner Status. This section will focus on the definition of long-term English learners for purposes of classifying and identifying this population of students, the characteristics of the subgroup of English learners targeted for this program. To many people, the term English learner often means someone relatively new to the United States. Yet, our secondary schools are experiencing a large and growing population of students who are still classified as English learners, even though they might have been in U.S. schools since elementary schools. In fact, 59% of English learners in secondary schools in California are long-term English learners. The recently approved State Assembly Bill 2193 defines long-term English learners as an English learner in secondary schools who has been enrolled in U.S. schools for six or more years, has not reclassified as English proficient, and is not making adequate academic progress as evidenced by grades and test scores. Let's watch Dr. Lori Olson, a leading authority in the area of long-term English learners, discuss these and other characteristics of the, this population of students. As you watch this video, think about the following question. What are the characteristics and needs of long-term English learners Dr. Olson describes? Here's the thing. It looks like it's a high school issue mostly because that's where you really notice it, down in those higher grades. But really starting with kindergarten and first grade and moving up, it starts to develop. Um, and to me, the long-term English learner issue, taking that lens to look at our system of schooling is really, really important because this is something that accrues and develops and is created year after year after year as young people move through our system. Now, in the last decade or so, um, which is the time that our current long-term English learners were in our school, uh, started schools, We've seen something going on in the state of California. Nationwide, under No Child Left Behind, this laser-like beam on the underachievement of English learners um, and the need to close the achievement gap has led to huge investments of effort and money and professional development and all kinds of, of um, reforms designed to try to close that achievement gap. And in that time, if you follow along, the gap has in fact increased. So, the gap is increasing. If you look at this data, you'll understand by the end of today a little bit more about this chart. But um, the AMAOs is just a, the state targets around the attainment of, um, of language proficiency for English learners. It's under No Child Left Behind. It's one of the, the accountability measures. And if you look from 2006 down to 2010, just the percentage of, of uh, local education agencies, school districts, and others that have actually met those targets, you'll see that, in fact, fewer and fewer and fewer are meeting these targets. Now, you might say, well, aren't the targets getting higher? And for these AMAOs, in fact, they are getting a little higher, but that doesn't explain this drastic reduction in the numbers of kids getting closer to English proficiency. We got a problem on our hand, and the problem on our hand <coughs> is not just in California. There are mentions of it in other places. The Colorado Department of Ed has identified their 10 plus years students as English learners that are still English learners. The Council of Great uh, City Schools has published a report on five major urban districts. And at the very end of the report talking about English learners, they say, well, there's this group, long-term English learners, um, that nobody really quite knows what to do with. We know they're there, but what effective interventions would be, we don't really know. As we just heard from Dr. Olson, the problem facing long-term English learners do not begin in secondary schools, but much earlier, starting in kindergarten. California has recognized this critical issue by identifying English learners who might be at risk of becoming long-term. Many of these students enter kindergarten and by the end of third grade have not moved or are progressing slowly towards English proficiency and are struggling readers and writers as evidenced by their performance on state tests. As Dr. Olson stated, there is an urgent need to avoid creating long-term English learners in the primary grades. In the next section, we will share the background and phase one of the development and implementation of the journalism program as a response to this critical issue. 
This section focused on long-term English learner definition for purposes of classifying and identifying this population of students, and the characteristics of English learners at risk, the subgroup of ELs targeted for this program.